Okay, so let me go to the camera part here and go there. Hey everyone, so welcome. I know yesterday, I apologize, we had a little mix up. Um, sometimes, you know, when we go to uh, stream, it's not always clear where we're going. <laughs> so Celine was over on the classroom page, but today they, I tried posting the video, but we're having issues with what I posted. So uh, she sent us the uh, original, so they're posting the original. So if you missed yesterday, go back to the page we're on right now and you'll see it there. And I do have my comments up. So we have quite a few people here. Um, uh, Pacola, and we have Patricia and Marty, Patty, Pat, Patty, no, Pat, sorry. Suze is here, Jan Janie is here, Carol, and Pi is here from, oh, Heather from Victoria. Um, oh, and Facebook lets you know I was on. Oh, cool. And let's see. Oh, <laughs> Susan from Calgary, but vacationing. Ah, in, where are you in Arizona? Oh, Linda, thank you. I'm glad you found us. <laughs> I know yesterday it was confusing. I was typing furiously, going back and forth. I had two pages open. I'm trying to go back and forth and help out. But uh, so we all got taken care of. It, it all worked out. So today we're talking about those hand look stitches. And I'm going to talk a little bit more, not only just the hand look stitches, but we have um, hand, we have a hand style stitches and we have shashiko stitches. And they're all a bit different and a bit the same. So does that help anybody? And I did create a little project. I'm going to go get it. It's back here. And I love these little boxes. I've made them before. And this is just out of leftover stuff. And I made that little one there. And then this is the tiniest one. Look at this. It's so cute. It goes with a little bag, a, a bigger bag that I made. So I don't know what you keep in here. Your, your AirPods can go in there. Oh, that's a good idea. I should really put mine in there. But today I, I made one just about the same size. And here it is here. Looks like this. And I was using those hand look stitches and some other stitches as well to make my piece. And so let me just show you on the side here. I mean, I'm gonna open this just slightly. There we go. So the top one, this is a hand look stitch. And when you use the hand look stitch, in the, your top, you're either using a monofilament or today I was using um, from Wonderfill Invisifil. And then this is a regular one. And then coming down there, this is one that's a little wonky. And then when I got done to keep my batting backing, my batting lining and top fabric together, I used a serpentine stitch and stitched over it to the inside. Well, but you know, it was laying flat. So it's on the, it's in here as well. So it's holding that fabric in there. And then I just did a plain one down here, uh, my little piece there. So the, all the hand look stitches were done on, with fabric and stabilizer. And then I added my uh, batting and backing and I did a couple rows of the serpentine stitch to hold all that together. Cause it's a little bag. I don't think anything's going anywhere. And of course I do love to make uh, these little zipper pull things. And I think I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna open it back up on this side and put one on this side. It really needs it like this little guy. He has it at both sides too like that all right and my bag if you, you notice it comes it's a little let's see if you can see it let me close it all right because of the way i boxed it it's wider at the bottom and narrower at the top and that's just on how you cut that little corner and i'll show you where that is as we go along if you've ever made these box bags you have to as your piece is done and you get it sewed together you have to cut the little square out and then you bring your edges together and sew them and I cut my square one inch by one inch. So that makes one side a little narrower. So my bag has a little bit of an A shape for me, for Anne. So not a bad thing. So there we go. And let's see here. It's hot off the presses. All right, so let me make sure we have, um, oh, earrings could go in there. Yes, they could. Let's see what else is going on. Okay, everybody's good. All right, so I'm gonna go, first of all, before we go to the machine, um, I did go, you know, you know that manual. Now this, you can do this not only on your CM17, but we have other um, 
machines, you can do the same thing. You'll see the same stitch and you can set it up just the way I am uh, on your machine. So we have it, you know, on the 15, uh, the 12, the 14, the 9450, the M7. Um, let me think what else is there. Uh, well, you know, all those other ones, even like a 3160, I believe I should go look, but a 3160 has the little stitch. You just have to change your tensions and I'll show you, I'll show you that. So I did go through the manual and I was looking at three different things. Um, so we do have, I'm going to hold this up this way. Hopefully it's not backwards to you guys. Let me see. Um, this is the hand look stitches. All right. And it tells you where they are in the CM17. All right. And there's a series of them. And they all, when you use them, they have, they're preset with their tension, though you can change them. You'll also find them under sewing applications. And I'll show you that. The other stitches we have are the um, Shashiko stitches, which are here. And page numbers were at page 100, 159, and then 128. So here, we have the, on the top here, the shashiko stitches, and it shows you the settings there and the foot that you're using, but it does not say anything about using uh, monofilament. All right, so it's stitched with, it doesn't show, it doesn't say to do it. Sometimes we do use these and add the monofilament, but we do have stitches right here, the hand look stitches in sewing applications that have the tension set for using with on the filament and you'll see the instructions right over here on this side. All right. And then the last one um, I've done, I'm going to go into this at another time, but we have the hand stitch style, which are kind of fun. This is a whole, this is um, all your deck, almost all your decoratives, some of your uh, lettering you can use in the hand look. Now hand look, what it does is as you bring it, you can bring in a whole line of stitching and you can uh, select all in the settings and then um, change the wonkiness of them. You can change individual ones. So you can have one one way, one another way, or you can change a whole row of them. So you can make your stitching look like, you know, your worst day of stitching, but it's your best day. So it's kind of fun. I kind of like that. I think it's kind of interesting. If you're working on a project that you want that um, hand feel to, these are great stitches to work with. They're not so perfect precise they give you that little uh, change to them. Also, if you create stitches, which I'm gonna do a series on our stitch composer, if you create your own stitches, you can you can make those wonky as well. So I, and maybe I shouldn't say wonky, but it just, it kind of manipulates them and makes them, you know, a, not the perfect straight stitch that you're looking at. So it's kind of, they're kind of fun to work with. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Everybody's good. All right, so I'm gonna go over to the machine and I'll bring my iPad on that side as well so we can see what's going on. And let me switch over here to that. And hopefully it's showing in the right direction. Let me see what comes up on my iPads. Oh, good. Yes, because I have to reset things to get the um, camera to go in this direction. Okay. All right. So now that I'm over here and... Oh, we have some things showing up here. I'm going to click on there and I'm going to show you some of my, I'm going to bring the camera to the side here. So we're underneath here for a minute. And I'm just going to show you some of the things that I use uh, for this. One of the things I have in my bobbin case is I put the blue dot bobbin case in. It's an eight gram case. So on the case itself, and these are the, these are the standard cases for the CM17. Let me get them out of my little box here. And I have a blue tip needle in today. So when you're looking at your bobbin cases, and I don't know if I can make it show up or not because of the lighting here, but inside there it says this is the 20 gram and it has a little whitish arrow on it. So it's it's used for a higher tension. If you need a higher tension, maybe you're embroidering and you need to bring your bobbin thread more to the back, you would use this. You would not want to use this with the hand look. Because the hand look has the good thread in your bobbin, and then up at the top is the monofilament or uh, the Invisafil. So you you need less tension in your bobbin and higher tension at the top. And then you have your standard case, which is a 10 gram. 
In the case of the CM17, our standard case is a yellow one. So this is why we're going away from the colors as much. We're going more for about for the grams. So they're being stamped with the part number and the grams. And this is um, a CM17, so that doesn't have that little uh, piece over here, the little bar that comes in to check that where your bobbin thread is at the time. All right, so the thing you wanna do is wind a bobbin with the thread you're going to use on the top, um, that you wanna show on the top, and then thread the top with either, uh, this is Invisifil, it's a 100 weight thread from Wonderfill, I really like that. Or you can use a, this is why, this is, um, Wonder Invisible Thread by YLI. This works really nicely too. And it comes in other colors like that. So does this. You can get that in other colors as well. So I am going to thread with this and I'm gonna move my iPad over a little bit so I can actually see what's going on um, with the comments. And hopefully I don't lose everybody in this case. Hopefully everybody's still there. So if you're still there, please give me a little thumbs up so I know. Sometimes disasters um, uh, happen. Um, well, you you do want a hundred weight or a monofilament. So Linda's asking, does it have to be a hundred weight? The hundred weight thread, the re and I'll show you the reason why. And I'm going to start threading my machine, so I need to lock it. Now, one thing too, when I thread, I do use my needle down, needle up. Then I lock, and I hold at the top, and I come through the machine. Now, this is a very thin thread, and I'm gonna put it all the way there, and I'm going to thread. There we go. And then I'm gonna take my thread. Let me see if I can get you over here. I take my thread and I put it, after it's threaded, I put it in the side of the machine from front to back. It holds the thread up there, you can barely see it. It puts a little tension on it so it doesn't put that little uh, yucky part on the back. The part number for the blue dot bobbin case. Hold on, let me see. We'll just pop this out. And I'm using, I'll show you the thread I'm using for the top. That I, it's, so it's, it, are you ready for this? I'm gonna read it. It is, if I can see it, okay. Eight, six, seven, five, one, three, one zero five and this is the one for the cm17 you have to get the one that's for your machine all right so that's that's what you want to do there and i do have my note paper that's funny disappeared oh it's right there all right i'll try to write that down again let me repeat it are you guys ready it is eight six seven five one three one zero five and it's eight grams it's the blue dot bobbin case there we go there and i always like to make sure i've got it in there good earlier when i opened it up to replace it i made sure i put my cleaned clean down on under there because i had some stuff hanging out and i'm going to put on my f2 foot for this and the reason you use an F2 foot with this one is it does have a little bit of build up the thread on the top, and this has that channel for you. All right, everything's threaded. I'm going to unlock my machine. Yes, and there we go. Oh, thank you, Janae. <laughs> yes, same process for the 9400. Same thing. All right, you could use a blue dot bobbin case. You could use your A case, but I do like the blue dot. Now this thread here, this is embroidery thread, and it's a um, it's an embellished thread, and it has a matte finish to it, so it's not real shiny. Okay, it's not a real shiny thread compared to embroidery thread, which looks like this. See how much shine it has? This is a matte thread, and I really like this matte thread when I'm doing these hand look stitches, and I'll show you why. You, and you'll wind a bobbin with this. Here's a tip, a pro tip on winding your bobbin. I do use the wind around method and not the poke through the hole so that the tail of my thread is at the bottom of my bobbin. But when, whenever I put a bobbin on that spindle, I turn it till it clicks. You do want that little part right here clicked onto your bobbin winder. That will give you a really nice wound bobbin. 
and it'll be easier to wind. If you do the wind around and tuck in the bottom, you can do that. You can wind your bobbin either way with putting it through the hole at the top or whatever. I do like this method. So I'm going to put that back in. I have a blue needle in my machine. I'm going to put my bobbin thread in. I had these other feet out because I used them in completing the bag. So I'm just going to stick them up on top so they're not in our way. There we go. And throw this over here. All right. And I'm going to show you my samples first, and then we're going to go look at them. So I made this sample piece. Let's see if I hold it up here. It's kind of hard. I, I know it seems a little dark because I had to turn off. I had to turn off a light because I it shines on the machine. But I started on this side, and you can see it's a little bit wrinkly. I'm going to hold it back. See how it wrinkled? I only used um, an iron-on stabilizer. Then I added a second layer, and it still was this little bit. Um, bumpy. And if you look close, I'll bring it really close if we can see. If you look close, you can kind of see, I had red thread in there. Uh, between the stitches, there's a little shiny part. That's the monofilament. And these aren't the best stitches. I was still playing. Then I added, I went over on this side and I used um, tearaway. So my stitches are forming much better. Okay. And then I tried different ones, and then I decided I wanted black thread. I did like the black. And then I started looking at the white thread, and I really like the white. Now, let me bring that in close. So when you look between those stitches, really close, you can see there's a little bit of thread in there. That is my Invisifil. This is a, a wonky one. It's supposed to be wonky. Here's one here. And this is the another one. So you can see on this side, this one here is a shashiko. The shashiko, they have you use the same thread top and bobbin, and it it's a little bit heavier stitching. Though you could use, you might want to put, um, you could try to do it the same way as, I mean, it would look like, you know, it would look like one of these over here. So this is the shashiko look. It just gives you a thicker uh, thread look there. Okay. All right. Let me check my comments because I, uh, yeah, this is a, like a medium weight tearaway. Yep, that's what I think it's a me yeah medium weight. Same thing I use for my embroidery. I just cut a piece for here. All right, so let's go to the front of the machine and I'll show you, if I can get my camera to move over, there we go. And I'll try not to stand behind it because um, when I do that, then the, uh, you can see me in the glare. And I took my cursor out and oh, here it is. Put it down. Here we go. All right. So let's look here. So there's a couple of ways to find your uh, stitches. Usually, you know, you come on your screen and you're in utility here. And if you wanted to go to the hand look stitches, they're in the quilting section. So you would come up here to this little wiggly thing here. And right here are my quilting stitches. I'm going to select there. Now, I know it said in the uh, the booklet that there are stitches 123 to 128, which I really think is at the very end of this. There's eight pages. So if I went over here and selected the next section, then I could just page back. And whew, there they are. I don't have to page through as much. Okay. And I, I could use the tab down here and look at them that way as well. This is all the stitches that you can see there and it shows you, well, if we were really back at the beginning, I'd still have to page through these, but I could see them when I come here. Let's get over a page. Here's page eight and those are the stitches that I would use and I could select it. Now, when you select it, um, I have mine already set to my favorite right here, but I'm gonna select, uh, did I change that one too? I did. All right, let me take this one back. I like 3.0. So I'm going to send that back to the default. So it looks like this. So your setting is 4.5 center needle. Uh, your stitch length is 2.5. Your tension is 8, your upper tension, because it needs to pull that white thread, that cream thread to the top. And then the presser foot pressure is 6. Now, what I liked after playing with this, and let me put this back in the center. Um, I like a 3.0. So I set this at 3.0 and I tried different ones. And then I just moved my tension up. I did like the tension a lot higher. So I went up all the way to the 10 
And then I opened my adjust area and I opened favorite stitch and I put it in my favorite stitch. So it's right there and it should have my, my favorites right there. So every time I come to this stitch, it will have my favorites. And then if I go here, my favorites are there. Okay. So that's one way to, well, it's 3.3. .3. That's one way to save your, your favorites. Then they're right there at the stitch. And as you notice, when I opened this up, there were, um, whoops, let's go here. When I opened them up, there were two of them. So I could save a different one here if I wanted to. So all of my stitches, um, however many we have, I don't know, I think there's like 12, 400, 1200, I don't know how many times two, plus you can do so much with them. So um, you can save your settings right there at the stitch. This is a very handy thing and I use it for a lot of different things. So once I have uh, my settings, and that's why I do this test. That's why I was doing this kind of a test here. All right, I was trying different things and then different threads, deciding on what I really wanted to do. I thought I just wanted to use the red, um, but then when I put the white down there, I was like, ooh, I really like the white. And so there are the first, there, there are the four choices for that. And then I just took my sample fabric and I put my stabilizer behind it and put it under there and stitched it. Now let's see if we can see, I'm gonna to try to move over. It's hard to show the stitching part. I don't have a completely down camera, but I can show you a little bit. Let's see, I have my piece and my stabilizer. Just lay it on there like that. And I'm going this way. And I did draw lines on it because I cannot go straight. When my sample one, I did not, but on, the, on my um, project, and I'll give you the project requirements near the end, I did draw a line so that I could stay straight. Now you can see I have that top thread right here going like that. And it's going to be tight in the, um, and I'm checking my top thread. This uh, thread sometimes comes off the spool and falls down. So I want to make sure I have it in the top so it doesn't wind around the spool, the bottom of the spool holder. I could put a net on it. That would help a lot on there. All right. So when I'm ready to go, I can put my foot down and, or I can just hit go, but I'm just going to, I'm going to put my foot down here. And then here we go. We're going to start and you'll see it goes a little back and forth. Now this thread here, I could just move it to the back now. And here we go. So it goes forward and forward. There we go, forward, backward, forward, backward. And if I could make my camera go up this way, you could see, there we go. Very slight movement. And of course I'm sewing crooked because I'm holding a camera in one hand. There we go. All right, so let me get all the way to the end and I'll show you what I do at the end. So when I get here, you have two choices. You can use your thread cutter, all right? And then, or you can um, pick your needle up, move your, and go to, the, move it to the back and use the side cutter. So if you use your thread cutter, still move your stuff to the back. Always move to the back like that. And see, there's my two threads. And that one gets, there's the top thread. And I could put it under my foot and I could lay it right up there in the side holder from the front to the back, not back, back to front cuts it, front to back is that way. Now it's ready for the next time. Every time I sew, I pull to the back, I get that thread, even when I use my thread cutter and I lift up. Now, if perchance your little pieces are kind of small, you can take your piece and run it under there and catch it. And then let's see if I can get this in front of the camera. You see right here, look at that. No, no little mess on the back. It just brings it, it holds it tight. This top thread is tight, so it doesn't um, get in your way. And I got lots of thread. Now, I also, when you're doing this, trim your threads as you go, because they just get in your way uh, afterwards, and you find them stuck on there. So in the project, I sample, first I made my sample of different stitches I liked, 
and then I stitched them down. I would stitch all of these first, okay? And then once that was done, I layered this fabric on top of my batting and backing fabric like this. I'll give you, well, I will want to see how this tears off. It's very cool. So when you're ready to tear this off, fold it down like that, right on those stitches. Start it here, and then you can zip like that, just zip on down. And then this one just pulls away. So after you get all your rows, it's real easy to take that out. So that looks really nice. So there's your back, there's your beautiful front, and you're ready to go. So you've done all your rows, and I'm doing them uh, down the short length of it, not the long way. I'm doing it the short way. And then this is much bigger than you need. You're just gonna lay this on here, center it. And then I wanted, this is actually fusible, so I, I had fused it to my backing earlier. But I wanted this to stay on here and not move around on me. So I used that serpentine stitch and I just went here. And I didn't even change to my um, AccuFeed foot. I just kept this foot on, but I did change my presser foot pressure. And I'll show you where that is. Let me do, let me throw this back over here. I'm gonna do one more row and show you how I did the, um, the serpentine so you can see that. So let's do a quick row here and we're ready to go. There we go. Let's see what's happening over here. So I have, I do have the Wonderfill in my bobbin, the Invisifill, which is a hundred weight thread. No, 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 I'm sorry. In the, I'm sorry, in the bobbin I have this and this is a 40 weight embroidery thread. It's either a 40 or a 50 weight embroidery thread is in my bobbin. But it's a matte finish, so it, it feels uh, thicker in some ways. So I like the look of it over a shiny thread. All right, let's cut this. Remember, we're gonna pull to the back like this. There we go. And I can see that top thread, it's, it's a thin thread. I can just grab it and put it up there. And once you continue to do that over and over, you don't need leaders or enders or any of that stuff. So there's my next one that I did. And then I'm just going to fold it back on there. And so I did all my lines and then I tore away my stabilizer. Let's see if I fold it right on there, it's better. There we go. I tore away my stabilizer. Woo, makes it nice. And then this side usually just pulls away. There we go, get that out of the way. And now I have that one row. And I'll bring it in close so you can see. It's hard to even see that thread. And it's a, it is a gray thread that's in there. I mean, this is the thread. Even on, when I lay it on there, you have a hard time seeing it. It's sort of, it's invisible. It's Invisifil. It's great for stitching in the ditch. Um, it's great for using it um, for your hand look stitches. Or you can use this. This is fine too if you want to use this in the top works the same this is a nylon thread and it this kind of disappears as well i used to always use this but now let's see if i can find the end of that i don't know where the end went i was going to lay it on the fabric so you could see it it's hiding it'll unspool on me when i don't want it to unspool but when i need it it's not going to so we'll just put its little cover over there all right so now i'm going to lay this on here like so I need to change my thread because I want to use uh, this color in the top of my machine. So I am going to uh, lock my machine and this is where I can clip my thread at the top. Oh, come on, clip, there we go. And then pull my thread out. I'm gonna take this thread and I'm going to thread that into my machine. I'm a two hand threader, so I hold it tight with my left. It's like a dance and I, I, I'm I, sorry, right. Hold it with my right, lead with the left. There we go. As soon as I get through here, the take up, I can let go at the top, but it does help 
to keep some tension on that. And then I just put it in here like that. And if you get used to using your left hand, it's a lot less uh, weird down here if you use your left hand. And then lefties, I'm not a lefty, but lefties unite on that part. And then now it's ready to go. Make sure you're all the way over to the left. That's important. And in your little uh, guy, guy there, your little, here we go. Boom. And we're threaded. Look at that. So that's like best, the best practice for threading is first your needle up, needle down, lock your machine, then thread. Okay. And I'm going to put this under the foot and up here. Now over here, let's go back to the machine. I'm going to get my serpentine stitch and show you that. So that's under the quilt category here. And then what I'm going to do is I have to page back because it's on the, well, it's on the first page. So let's go to heirloom and page back that way. And oh, more heirloom, sorry, three pages. So here's my serpentine. And then I liked it, uh, it I made it uh, somewhat wide. So it went all the way. And then I think I had it at 3.0. I like really like 3.0 as my stitch length. And then this is my presser foot pressure and I just reduced it. Uh, maybe maybe to four because I'm sewing on a thicker layer here this way it won't, it won't there won't be so much pressure pushing on this and I could put my AccuFeed on but I was only going to do about four lines of stitching so I didn't really want to do that so I'm going to set this up right here I'm going to put my foot down and hit the start button and I'm just going to keep this in the center of the foot like that there we go. Now you can definitely put your AccuFeed foot on if you want. But for this, when I'm demoing, it's, you know, for me to switch back and forth, um, it, this was a little bit easier. And it still came out fine. There we go. It does make a cute little, put it here. It does make a cute little stitch there. Okay. All right. How's everybody doing? Everybody's good. All right. So now. Before we get to the project requirements, let's go back to the screen and I'll show you some things in there. Now remember, we were over here in ordinary sewing. Oh, and I shouldn't stand in front of it, sorry. And then I went to the decorative stitches, I went to quilt, and I went all the way to the end of the stitches to find the handbook stitches. Okay. I could also go here to my sewing applications, which is under the house. On other machines, it's the little t-shirt. All right. Yes, 40 weight in the bobbin. It was a standard, it was a uh, embroidery thread that I had in there, okay? All right, and so here's your sewing applications. Uh, I'm gonna choose sewing mode. And then across the top, I have my three sections. I'm gonna go to quilting. And then when you come into quilting, you have to page over and you'll find Shashiko and you'll find your hand look stitches there. So I can go ahead, I'll just show you Shashiko. Same kind of thing, tension is normal there. When you go to hand look, look what your tension goes to, eight. And there, there's the um, six stitches that we looked at in the other uh, area. You can come in here, let me open this. And you can save it here as well. So if you didn't want to save it at the stitch, you could save it in quilting and it would be in here, okay? If you wanted to save it. All right, so let me, so that's where those are. Let me show you, remember at the beginning, I talked about um, the, um, hand, the uh, hand style stitches. So hand style stitches to get to use those, what they are, is when you go into your decorative stitches, when you select the combine button, and then you select a stitch, you get this little thing down here, this little leafy thing. And then with the leafy thing, I'll just, and I can pick other stitches. Let me go through here and get something interesting. And it's giving me like one of each of these. Uh, let's find some more things. Quilting, I put one of those in there, one of those in there. 
And maybe I want some lettering. I think it will do this lettering. Okay, then I can select this and I can select all of them and make them all, all the same wonky or I have the E selected. I can just go here and you can see the E changing. You can go all the way up to five. So let me take it back and then I'll go to all and I can change all of them. So they all get a little bit funky there. Did we see that? It's kind of, whoops, sorry, I'm standing in front of it, but hopefully everybody can see that. Okay. So that's another area to play with as well. And then copy, paste, and uh, here you can trash it. If you say okay, you can save your combination, any combination that you're here, using this folder over here. And when you do that, it saves it into the machine on the sewing side, or you can save it to a USB stick and take it to your, whoops, no, you can take it to your friend's house and stitch it on their machine if they have the same kind of thing. All right, a lot of information, a lot of information. All right, let's go back in front of the machine. Are there any questions? Think of some questions while I'm getting reset up over here. So I'm gonna show you some things. All right. So here are, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it up for a, a moment so everybody can see it. Let's see if I can, let me put it here. Does everybody see that? Okay, give me a little thumbs up if you can. Let's see, there we can see. So your outer fabric is going to be, and you know, let me see if I can do this. Hold on one second. I had a great big piece of black fat, black paper here. Here it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now it's on the floor. Okay. Slipped out. Let's see if we can do it this way. There we go. You guys see that? Give me a thumbs up. You can see your outer fabric, the red fabric, is six by eight and a half six wide by eight and a half. All right. Your batting and your lining, you know, I just want it bigger than the piece. I'm going to trim it. I'm going to trim it to this size once I get done stitching, but I always like a little bit extra on there. Um, just, you know, you never know things happen. So seven by nine and a half is plenty. You want your tearaway stabilizer that's going to go under your outer fabric that you're going to stitch on. Hi, Danielle. And then you need an eight inch zipper. Now, if you wanna put any little tabs on each side, you'll have to get those, you know, add those in too. All right, does everybody have that? There'll be a quiz at the end. All right, so what you would do is you take your outer fabric, you do all your stitching, you layer it on top of your batting and your backing, you add a bit of the um, serpentine or some, you can even straight line stitch it. You can also do your um, uh, your, your uh, hand look stitch through the layers. Also test that out because you may have to change the, uh, the length of the stitch or the presser foot pressure when you're doing that. Um, I just wanted to do a little bit of stitching on there and just leave these by themselves. Then when you get done, you trim everything all the way around, even with your red fabric. So I am going to quickly trim that so I can show you the next step. I don't have my, I don't have perfect step outs like Miriam does today. Some days I have lots of step outs and some days I don't. I know, what are these big things I'm using? These are scissors. You can use a rotary cutter. Sometimes I like the sound scissors make when they're cutting. I don't know. It reminds me of my grandmother. And she used to use giant scissors. She was a seamstress, so she would be a... There we go. There's that. So you have it all trimmed up like this. It's ready to go. You turn it this way, and you're going to apply your zipper on the short ends. So you need an, at least an 8-inch zipper. And you're going to take your zipper and have it wrong side down onto the fabric. 
like that. And I like a longer zipper because I'm going to cut away all this mess on the sides. I don't really use this part here, the edges part. If it's really long and I have some some tail left over, I can I can cut it and make the my little tabs. So I pull the zipper apart and I lay it on top of itself like this. And I could do a decorative stitch in the middle or just a regular stitch and these make great little loops at the end. I just love these. Oh, so when I, you do a class with me and you wear, wear zippers and I tell you to bring like a 20 inch zipper for a little project like this, it's because I'm going to take all those little ends home. I love them. So, all right. So you're going to line this up on here and in your um, sewing applications on your CM17, there is a pouch. There are directions to sew the zipper on a pouch, uh, on, onto a pouch. So you would sew it on that side. Once it's sewed, you'd flip it over and top stitch it. All right, and I'm just gonna pin that in place because I'm not, I'm not gonna stitch that today. I could, but, and I, oh, there they are. All right, let's put some pins here. So we're, the, the magic of pins. So you get it sewed on here, you flip it up, you top stitch it, come back on light. You top, you flip it up like this, top stitch it, and then you bring it this way. Always keep your zipper on top and you're going to lay it here like that and stitch it on. And then open your zipper up to top stitch it. And then close your zipper halfway because when you get it sewn on here, I'm going to, I'm going to open it right now. Because when you get to finishing this, you do need the zipper open halfway or you won't be able to open your, your piece. You know how that is when we do zipper pouches? And you're all going, wait a minute, aren't, aren't I the one who does them all in the hoop? Yes, I do. But I love all zipper pouches and this little box thing I just love. So, and if this was all stitched together, it wouldn't be coming apart. There we go. All right. So you have, I have it all zip in there. I'm going to take it like this. It's all stitched in. I'm going to lay it flat like that so that my zipper is in the center. Get it together there. There we go. All right, so we see that. So I'm going to have it all nice and flat like this. Now, this is when I, um, I actually, I put some little stitches across here to hold this in place for me. And I slip my little tab in there at that point and you would slip the other tab on this side. All right, so they would be at either end of your zipper. That's where you want them. So once you have it this way, this is where you make those box corners. Now for me, I did an inch by an inch in each corner. So I cut out, I, first I drew the lines and I cut this out. Now because I used an inch and an inch, it made my box come in like this a little bit. So I kept to figure the math out. One of those has to be a quarter inch bigger than the other one if you want it to be square at the end. I kind of like that little A-frame look myself. Let me show you what I mean. The difference, the difference. This one is the box. See how it's perfect? So one of your, one of your lines is longer than the other. Mathematicians can figure it out. I kind of like this little look here. Let me put on this side too. See how it comes in a little bit? It's not quite, I think it's cute this way. It reminds me of like a little doctor bag or something. So it's not not just a square cube. It's kind of cute. So I used a one inch by one inch. If you are doing it and you want it more square, one of those numbers um, has to, one of those numbers is not like the other. One of those numbers has to be a quarter of an inch, I believe, bigger than the other one. All right. So once you cut that out, you'll have a section here. And I'm actually going to cut it. I'm just going to cut it for you to show you what it looks like. I know, I'm just gonna be chopping away here. Oh, goodness. We'll pretend I measured and I cut it. Okay, so now it's, it's cut away, it's like that, right? You sew across here. This is why that zipper has to be open. You're gonna sew across here. You're gonna, sew, you're gonna cut out and sew across there. And then after that's sewed, you bring these corners together. 
like this. And they're like that. And then you just zip across. So you very simple. It's very simple. It looks difficult, but it's very simple. And I'm sure there's some great videos out there on the World Wide Web on that. How many of you have made that box bag? Give me a little thumbs up or a heart. Everybody's so quiet. All right. I'm going to turn the camera back on and see if there's any questions before we close up for the day. And everybody got the requirements for the project, right? Now, if you like to do uh, zipper pouches in the hoop, tomorrow we are doing our third segment of zippers in the hoop, uh, our monthly one. So it'll be our third one. Let me go back to the camera. Here we go. There we are. All right. And I'm going to show you two different things, well, three things tomorrow uh, with our pouches. I'm so excited. And I was inspired by something I had to do this week. So I, I sort of segued from what I was going to show everyone and I added something different. So sometimes that happens with my projects. I have a list of how I'm, what I want to do. And then some days I get started and I'm like, oh, no, we could do this and we could do that. So, oops. So tune in, tune in tomorrow here and I'll show you how to create those in the hoop with your artistic digitizer software. So let me check over here. Uh, right. Now you can make them. Tammy says not that small. Um, she's made bigger ones. Yes, you can make you can make bigger ones. Um, so when you make bigger ones, it's typically, you know, mine was like six by eight. So, um, and that was, so that's two and a half inches bigger. That's kind of the measurement I used for mine. So if you wanted to go bigger, you definitely can go bigger. You don't have to do miniature. Um, I love little things. Your picture of the project is too small. The camera, the camera with, oh, when I held it up before it was too small. Is it better this way? I'll get, let me get it back. Thank you for that. It's hard, you know, it's hard for me to see. There's a lag that I, when I see it, so I don't see it until it's, you know, almost too late. There we go. I'll hold it up again. There we go. So see how the bottom, it's different than the little guy. Uh, my, this is one of my favorites. I love this little guy. See how they're, they're kind of, one is more, this, this one is more square. I'm square, man. I'm not, look at that. I got to be different. I got to be different. That's how it is. But I am going to go back. I do want to put one of these on that other side, like this one. This one, I made a very fancy kind of layered tab. So same thing. But I think it's so cute. I might make a bunch more of these. These would be great. You know, we have a lot of designs in our machine, uh, like Shashiko stitches and some, some that, you know, fit the whole hoop. You could stitch those out and then uh, layer them up with some batting, or you can even stitch them with batting sometimes, and then create these out of that. How fun would that be? You could probably, you know, some of them are, you could fit in our big, for, um, the big RE46 hoop, and then you can maybe get two out of that. Oh, I know these, I'm addicted to bags. Somebody, when I was in uh, Puyallup at Sew Expo, we had some gals come to the booth from Canada and I helped them with a few things. And they gave me, they gave me a cute little zipper pouch and it had little uh, necessities in there, like a tiny little thing, a chapstick and um, some candy and some things like that. But me, the uh, zipper pouch queen, I was just like, oh my God, it's a zipper pouch. I was so excited that I got a zipper pouch, but I loved what was in it too. So I want to thank the gals that stopped by and uh, visited with me that day. That was just so much, so nice, very nice. All right. Yeah. What a great idea. You know, like, yeah, you can, I save a lot of those stitch outs that I get from uh, when I do shows and then I bring them home and I have things that I can, you know, use as bases. And I almost made this today uh, with some of that, but I just decided I wanted all of it to be the hand look stitch. And I'm loving, look at that hand look stitch. Isn't that the cutest? It looks like I handpicked that stitch. I mean, you can hardly see the stitch between it. It's amazing. Sometimes I amaze myself. Do you amaze yourself? Don't you? There we go. How is that? So let me go over this again. In the um, when you're doing the hand look stitch, okay, to get this, 
in your bobbin, you put your decorative thread, like a embroidery thread. And that's a 40 weight thread, typically. I used a uh, thread from Embellish, which is, I think, a Floriani company or so, I don't know. And um, it's a matte finish thread. So it looks like, oh, it's up in my machine, but it, it's not shiny. And it's really cool to use. I use it for other embroidery. It's an embroidery thread. I use it for other embroideries. But I like this home look to it. It's like a homespun. You know what I mean? It's like, um, it's not shiny. Like sometimes embroidery is, you know, too shiny. So using a, a, a um, matte finish is really great. So in the bobbin, I have my embroidery thread. And I use the blue dot bobbin case. It's the eight gram case. So if you have a different machine, like a... Uh, 9450, 9400, um, 8900, those ones, get a blue dot. For, I suggest a blue dot. You can try it with your A and see or your, your red one, see if it works. But I do like the eight gram case. And then in the top, I, you can either put monofilament or I used Wonderfill Invisafill, which is a hundred weight thread. So it's a very fine, um, I don't have to, you know, worry about, it's not going to melt or that, you know, whatever. So I don't have to worry about that, but look at, this does a great, get it under the light better. It just really does a great job. Really nice. Really, really nice. All right. Um, a good way. To, yes, a good way. Uh, now the pattern, Sandra. Well, you could probably find um, commercial patterns for a box. Um, I think that's, this might have been a, um, you you can you know there are people who sell the patterns i just showed you in here how to create it using a six by eight and a half piece of uh, fabric and then you put your zipper on the six and a half the six side uh fold it zipper to the back cut your little box corners and stitch it back together so it's really look back go back through the video and you'll see that part of it it's really and you'll probably if you go out to the World Wide Web after this, you'll probably find something there too that shows you, you know, how to create these. It's all about cutting that, the, the bottom, when you cut that corner to box it. Um, I cut mine one inch square, so it makes the top come in a little bit. All right, so one of those has to be uh, probably that top edge. One of them has to be uh, less or more to get a square. But I don't want to be square. How about that? I know my family's just laughing about that now. All right, let's see what's up there. Um, so Tammy, you have the 14,000. You could try it with your red dot case and see how you like the stitch. It may look beautiful. You may have to change, like I changed the tension still, even with the blue, I changed my tension up to uh, 10. I increased the tension to 10. Uh, so you could try it with your with your red one. And if you don't get the stitch you like, then go to the blue one. The blue one is a lower tension. So when your tension is high at the top, it will pull up that thread more and give you, um, you know, the, the stitch. And I do lengthen my stitch. I do like a 3.0. All right. All right, everyone. I am. Yeah. So there, Linda says, just Google box zipper pouch, lots of freebies. There you go. So I want to see you posting your hand look stitch little bat, little uh, pieces, even big ones. You know, you can make a whole series, small, medium, large, you know, like that. I may have to leave now because I have to do it like six more bags. Um, I'm addicted. I posted that somewhere else. I said, um, hi, I'm Ann. I'm addicted to zipper pouches. <laughs> so I think I'm going to have a club. <laughs> All right everybody. I want you to try those stitches out. Join me again tomorrow. I'm here all week. Actually, that's what I should say. I'm here all week. Hope you don't get tired of me. Um, I'll be back tomorrow, uh, same time, same place with the Artistic Digitizer software showing you our uh, zipper pouch number three working in the hoop of your machine. I'm very excited about that. And I'm excited that you uh, joined me today and hope to see you again. Have a great day, everyone. Enjoy the rest of it. See you again soon.